Hello there, Dr. Zakir with you, Senior ENT Consultant. So we have a very interesting topic for today. So, hello. hello. I am fine, thank you. What is the topic for today? Epistaxis. Epistaxis? Yes. Right. Thank you so much. So now you know the topic, epistaxis, which means bleeding from inside the nose. This condition is very common and we shall, we shall deal with it in eight different parts, starting from part one to part eight. So in the part one, we'll see the blood supply of the nose, the types of, the classification, different types of epistaxis and the common causes of epistaxis. So let us start, here we go. So the first, the blood supply, the anatomy, basic anatomy and the blood supply. Now, the main artery which starts from the heart in the neck, when it reaches the neck, it divides into two. The internal carotid, which doesn't have any branches in the neck, it, it goes inside the brain and it reaches the orbit and finally it supplies the upper part of the nose, as you see in this picture. The anterior earth model and the posterior earth model, these are supplied by, the, these are the terminal branches of the internal carotid artery. Now, the second one, that is the external carotid artery, it has got several branches as you see in the neck and it doesn't go inside the cranium, doesn't go inside the brain, but it supplies all the structures in the neck and the face and finally it reaches the nose also. And in the nose, it supplies the posterior part and the inferior part, the sphenopalatine, greater palatine and superior label. Now at this point, I'd like to tell you, if you see this area, the anterior post area, you have four vessels joining here. There's a good blood supply. There's the anterior earth model, superior label, greater palatine and the branch of the sphenopalatine. This area is named after James Little, so known as Little's area. And the, there's a plexus of artery. So that plexus is called as Kieselblatt's plexus. So that is called as Little's area. Now you have seen the blood supply of the nose. Now the common sites of nasal bleed. One is the little area which I have already mentioned. Second one will be the septum only in the upper part, the ethmoidal area. Then posteriorly, as you in this see in this picture, just above this blue mark, that this is this area, the sphenopalatine area, and the blue mark here, which is posterior to the inferior turbinate. Why I have marked blue? Because it's a venous plexus, the rest everything, they are all uh, arterial plexus, and this is uh, called mentioned, termed as Woodruff's plexus. So these are the common sites of nasal bleed. So nasal bleed, it can be just one spot as you see here or it can be diffuse throughout the nose. It can be spot here or it can be from the sphelopalatine area or it can be diffuse. Now let us see the different types of epistaxis. One, it can be primary or secondary. Primary means there is no known cause for the bleed. Secondary means there is some cause like there is accelerated hypertension or he has got a mitral stenosis or he is in cardiac failure, there is drug, drug induced or drug overdose, there is multiple number of causes. So specific you have a cause for it. Second one whether it is spontaneous or induced. Spontaneous there is, uh, it starts spontaneously. The child was sleeping in the bed and suddenly it starts bleeding. Other one is induced like say like there is a definite cause like there is a surgery being done and the patient bleeds. The third one whether it is anterior or posterior is nothing but the difference being anterior bleed means it bleeds from the nose and posterior means it bleeds behind the nose the patient may uh, swallow it and after some time he may vomit vomit the whole blood and it will be coffee colored. So there, there are so many differences between anterior bleed and posterior bleed. Anterior bleed usually is a little area that's the commonest and it's common in children. There's a low pressure area and the bleed, bleed is only mild and treatment is going to be simple, no need of admission. But posterior bleed, that is commonly the sphenopalatine area, that is a common site. It is seen in adults more than 40 to 50 years. There is a second, there may be a, always a secondary cause like hypertension or so, so many causes which I will mention in the next slide. And usually the bleed is going to be severe and most of the patients, they need admission and treatment has to be given in the hospital. Now the fourth type, whether it is mild or moderate to severe. Mild anterior bleed 
can means you can manage in the OPD and the patient goes home within say less than 15 minutes or half an hour. Moderate to severe bleed we have to manage in the hospital and we have to assess the patient there is blood loss, significant blood loss that's what it means. Now you have one more variety where it is termed as bleeding in children and adult. Usually in children the bleeding is going to be mild and usually in adult as it is secondary cause the bleeding is going to be more. These are the different types of classification of hysteresis. Now coming to the, co the causes, I will just mention a few common causes. So let us divide into whether it is a local cause or whether it is systemic. For first we will deal with a local cause. Local causes are one trauma which can be self inflicted like the children they keep on rubbing the nose the digital manipulation which is a, one of the most common causes or maybe there is a uh, foreign body in the nose or maybe the patient is a cocaine addict that also can have bleeding from the nose and the second one being surgery that is also very common. The infection it can be acute or chronic it can be specific or non-specific it can be bacterial fungal parasitic of any sort of that so and any granulomatous conditions like uh, vaginous granuloma, Stewart's granuloma, any other granulomatous condition also like tuberculosis, syphilis, leprosy, all these can uh, you can have one other common uh, presentation will be nasal uh, bleed. Now you have few congenital causes too like hemangioma in the nose. Now benign condition, benign means if you ask me if it is mal uh, whether it is malignant, no. It may turn malignant, that is what the uh, term benign means. Like papilloma, any sort of papilloma, like inverted papilloma, fungiform papilloma, hemangiopericytoma, and you have so many uh, benign conditions. Now, finally, the malignancy, of course, the malignant condition will definitely bleed. These are the local causes. Now, coming to systemic cause, starting with hypertension, there is a big controversy in this whether hypertension as such can present with nasal bleed. Uh, the, the commonly the, uh, scientifically it is not accepted that hypertension can result in a bleed but what we see in most of the patients when they come to the casualty with nasal bleed the BP is found to be very high and unless we uh, decrease the blood pressure it is not going to help we are not able we will not be able to control the BP whether it is a, it found at the same time because of anxiety whether it is it causes it results in uh, blood pressure high blood pressure results in epistaxis still it is a controversy. Now the other common causes are bleeding diathesis, liver failure, renal failure, leukemia, lymphoma and drug induced. So let me tell you about some, something, a few more points about drug induced. So there is angioplasty, open heart surgery, valve replacement, all these have become very common nowadays. So what happens is after all these surgeries, they, all these patients they will be on blood thinning agents or anticoagulants and antiplatelets like aspirin, brillanta, clopidogrel and so many new drugs have been added to it. So all this when there is a slight bleed or uh, there is a nasal bleed what happens since the patient is already on drug induced or uh, uh, all these drugs and let me uh, name few more like warfarin which is most commonly used, heparin, hemi, uh, hemiheparin and all this since the patient is already in this drug and there is a bleed the bleeding spot there is no uh, the, it will not close because the patient is already using all these drugs. So because of that also we will not be able to control the ble uh, bleeding very easily. The other causes being blood diseases where we can subclassify as whether it is a coagulopathy where the coagulation there is a defect in the coagulation factors and thrombos thrombopathy where, which means the platelet either the count is less or structurally they are, uh, they are uh, not normal vasculopathy which is related to the blood vessels and uh, the other causes being hormonal changes, physiological and the last third type that is local systemic and the last one is idiopathic where it does not come any of this we do not have a specific cause for this and uh, in spite of all doing all this investigation we do not have any specific cause. So that is uh, so in this video we have seen mainly the blood supply of the nose and the different types how do you classify the epistaxis and the common cause of epistaxis. Now we will go on to the next topic. So thank you so much.